All right, before we get started on this project, I want to take just a second and talk about the last project to answer a few questions. And the question I got the most was, where do you find veneer? Especially um, overseas viewers, you seem to have a really hard time finding this. Um, this is what I used. It's uh, from Sars and Company. They're out of North Carolina. I've got this at a local um, wood supply store. And a lot of you have been buying their veneers after the video, and so Jeff from the company contacted me, and I asked if they did overseas. He said, yeah, you can email him. And uh, if anybody's wanting to buy some veneers for making rings, you can email him. And so his email is jeff at sveneers.com. So um, if you liked that last video, be sure to watch the next, uh, next couple videos, and we'll, I'll try and answer all your questions. Let's see, what else? Oh, and Jeff sent a nice care package and with really cool stuff that I'm excited to show you. So we'll do that next video as well. And there'll be some giveaways from this company, from Jeff and uh, Sours and Company Veneers. So thanks to them. Um, anyway, let's get started on this project. And so this template I made and I put it in the description. Uh, you can print it out so you can make your own. It's a little bit of work, but it doesn't require much in the way of tools. You don't need to silk screen it or anything like that. So anyway, let's get started. I started with a piece of foam core that I cut to the width of the shirt. You want to use something rigid that won't uh, let the shirt slide around. So you could use wood or even cardboard if it's firm enough. And I tried three different methods for making the shirts. First a spray paint, then a brush paint, and then the iron-on vinyl, just to see which method I like the best and I thought gave you the best results. Here I'm cutting out the stencil on cardstock and the benefit of that is you can reuse your stencil many times. If you use thin paper it's going to rip eventually. Next I'm going to give a very light mist of this Easy Tech on the back of the stencil. It helps to keep the stencil in place but it's totally removable and it's not going to leave adhesive on your shirt. And this spray paint is specifically for t-shirts but I had horrible results. I shook the can as long as it said to. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but this is what I ended up with. Next, I decided to try the brush on shirt paint to see what kind of results I could get with this. It took about five coats to get it a solid white, and I found that if you did the first coat very light, it stopped the paint from bleeding under. Use a blow dryer in between to speed up the process. But don't wait till it's totally dry before you remove the paper. Next I tried to do the wave line below. I just cut along the wavy line and separated the paper a little bit. Put on some spray tack to hold it in place. And after the first or second coat I decided just to freehand the rest. I think the results with paint were pretty good. There's only a few tiny spots that went under the paper, but that's forgivable. I think it's good enough. The last method I tried, and I think it was the best one, was the heat transfer vinyl. And I'd never used it before, but it's really easy to work with. I bought mine, in case you're wondering, from threadart.com. There's other places that sell it, but I was happy with how quick they shipped it. I'll leave their information in the printout below, but they sell all different kinds. They sell glitter and gold, and you really have a lot to choose from. I got the 20 inches wide by yard, so just one unit. It's enough to make several shirts. Here I'm cutting a piece of vinyl the size of a piece of paper to run through an inkjet printer, and this method works if you're using the right kind of printer. The first printer I tried didn't work. This printer, the paper goes in from the front and comes out the front, so it bends it in a U-shape, and the vinyl can't make that turn, so it just jammed. Next I tried a printer that feeds from the top and just goes straight through and that one worked. Now I'm printing on the adhesive side and as long as you don't touch it and let the vinyl dry for even over a day, you'll be alright. But if you touch it, the ink's just going to smear off. You still have to kind of baby it and you can't touch it with moist hands even when it's dry. This vinyl is intended to be used with a heat press and that's a specific piece of equipment that shirt makers will use. Uh, but you can use an iron as well. I wanted to double check to make sure this got hot enough. You need to be in between 310 and 320 degrees Fahrenheit, so this iron's going to work perfect. And if you're wondering in Celsius, that's about 157 degrees. And before you get going, use a junkie shirt and some scrap vinyl just to iron on a few pieces so you get the feel of how it works, how long you need to hold it down. That way you're not going to ruin your good shirt. And I place a piece of vinyl down 
and just tack it with the iron. I'm not doing the whole thing, just enough to hold it down. You're gonna notice there's a very shiny side and that part's removable. And by the way, there's no steam on this iron. I turned the, the steam feature off. So place the vinyl so it doesn't touch the edges of the paper and then just take it down by barely heating up just one little part of it. Once the pieces are tacked down, you can remove the paper. Then I've laid a piece of tissue paper down to make sure I didn't bump and move the vinyl when the iron's sliding across. You want to hold it down for about 15 seconds and make sure you're applying a pretty good amount of pressure. You don't want anything soft underneath. You can even use a cutting board or something. Make sure that whatever's underneath the shirt is really rigid. After doing the first ironing, you can peel off the clear plastic and then do the same thing again. And it's not a bad idea to flip the shirt inside out and iron from the inside as well. Now I'm going to cut out the top and bottom waves. I put a dotted line to show exactly where the pattern repeats. And then there's one more for the middle. It's marked center. Then measure the width of your shirt, double it and add an inch or two. And that's how long of a wave you're gonna need to cut so that it wraps around the whole shirt. I lined up the wave on the edge of the vinyl and I'm tracing the cutout. You're gonna to have to do this on, again on the adhesive side, not that clear plastic side. Then move the stencil over where the pattern repeats, line it up along the dotted line and keep going. I did the full length of this sheet I got, so if you're doing a big shirt, you might need to buy two yards if you want a full length to go all the way around, or you're going to have to do it in pieces. Here I'm cutting out the smaller wave, and halfway through this I remembered to use the spray tag to hold down the paper, so be sure to use that, it makes it a lot easier than just holding it down with your hands. The last page of the printout shows how far down the wave is from the bottom of the shirt, so I cut that piece out and I'm using it all the way around to help tack down the wave. So it's the same distance all the way around from the bottom of the shirt. You'll have to join the vinyl pieces together and so I planned on doing this kind of underneath the arm somewhere where it's not obvious. I cut off the corners to help it blend a little bit better and then I ironed it down. Then peeled off the clear part. And then I bent the wave just enough so it lined up with the other end. I have about a quarter of an inch overlap and now I'm ironing down one piece of vinyl on top of the other and it worked really well. The larger wave is just a repeat of the first. I cut out the middle portion of the printout just to make sure the distance was right all the way around the shirt and then did the full ironing when it was all attached. It does take a bit of time to do this shirt, but I think the results are really, really good. And what I like is anybody can do this from home. You just need scissors and an iron, really, and uh, you could do this yourself. All right, well, here it is, and I think it came out a lot better than the first ones I made my kids. I didn't put a logo on the back, and I didn't put waves, and I used paint. This one's vinyl, and it's complete. So I think if you definitely want this to look good, use vinyl, not paint. It, uh, it's far superior. It's a lot more work. Um, but it looks way better and uh, paints okay if you want it um, fast and cheap but if you want it to look just spot on and nice and clean use vinyl um, if you guys have any questions send them to me uh, you can email them uh, in the subject line put viewer mail that way I can find it easier um, and also uh, my email address is happyadamirl at gmail.com you can find it if you click the channel name and then the about tab you're gonna find my email there um, so you can also send your pictures of stuff you made, things like that. I want to take a second and talk about the printout, um, just because it might be a little confusing. First page is all the materials I used, even barcode. So if you want to get the exact same stuff, you can. Second page is the main cutout. You can see it there, I put numbers on it. And uh, that way it will help you in the placement in case you get mixed up which piece goes where. Um, 
Third page, this is if you're doing vinyl and you want to maximize the area. This one sheet you can do five lobsters on, okay? So if you really want to get the most out of your vinyl, you can use that one. Oh, incidentally, if you have trouble, kind of like I did, in printing on your vinyl, just take your um, cutout, your stencil here, your lobster cutout, flip the vinyl over to the adhesive side, the side that's going to attach to your shirt, and you can draw with a pencil right on it and then cut it out that way. So you're not stuck. You don't have to do it uh, the, the printing method. Um, then this next shape is bigger than the first stencil, okay? This one's important. If you're doing vinyl, cut this out, a little bit of spray tack, lay it down, okay? And this is, this, uh, is bigger than this one. So when you take your shape here, you're going to be able to place it right inside and it won't touch any of the paper edge, which is important. So you're going to be able to lay out each piece perfectly, but none of those pieces will touch the paper. There's enough room. Um, and then you can tack it down with an iron and it won't glue onto the paper. If you use this cutout, you know, as a stencil, I hope this isn't getting confusing on you, but if you don't have extra room, if you don't use this one, you could put your vinyl down and iron it onto the paper. And that would be a problem because it'll tear the vinyl, okay? Oh, and then the last page is this, uh, just the waves. So hopefully that helps you guys. Good luck. And uh, I think you'll have a lot of fun. And uh, my sons, I know, are excited for this. And by uh, no means is this the um, be-all and end-all of shirt making. In fact, far from it. This is just the way I did it. If you guys really want to get into this, there's a, a really neat YouTube channel I found. It's called Cat Spit Productions. And uh, his name is Jonathan. He does really good, uh, high-quality videos where he's showing you everything about screen printing. And he specializes in t-shirt making. He's a nice guy. Um, so check out his channel if you really want to get into this and uh, learn from a pro. So anyway, you guys are awesome. If you make stuff and you want to take pictures and send it to me, I'd love to see it. Uh, just send it to my email and all emails. If you could, put viewer mail in the subject. That way it's easier for me to find. Anyway, you guys, take care. Have an awesome day.